Greetings, VAC fans. And why do you see a Kirby G5 and a Rakar 8850 with their cords all mangled up? That's because both of these need some bearings. And I got a 10-pack of these nifty little bearings here. Let's see if I can get the camera to focus. Come on. Focus. You did it a minute ago. There we go. I guess i got to force it. 6200. This is a typical bearing used in these things. I uh, worked with a few of these. There's both sides. And I'm going to, of course, make a video of repacking and or replacing these bearings. But in the meantime, I want to go over my particle counter. Been a lot of discussion of this handy dandy little device here. This is an HT9600 particle counter. And I even have the manual for it. I'm going to show you fairly quickly. But there seems to be a lot of misconceptions, a lot of misunderstanding about this thing. Because normally you see different types of particle counters on there, namely, like, say, an IQ Air with a single measurement channel. So, right here, I've turned this on, and this measures three different sizes of particles at once. 0 0.3 micrometers, 2.5 micrometers, 10 micrometers. And the particle count right now is all zeros because I haven't pushed the run button. You have a sensor here, which is actually right here, that does temperature and humidity. And I can change it to Celsius, but since I'm in the United States and we're still on Fahrenheit, I like, well, just looking at Fahrenheit. That's what I'm used to. Uh, you've got a time and date stamp. And this unit uh, runs on battery only. That's what I wanted for this unit. You can see I've got like a two-thirds uh, charge of the battery in there. And you have this scale that starts off with green. And it, the indicator for this scale is a vertical white bar. And you can see that's all the way over to the left. Well, I haven't run anything yet, so it's not going to move. But as you go over to the right with this vertical white bar, uh, the particle count gets higher and higher, and the particle air quality gets worse and worse, so on and so forth. Let's see. You've got a power button. You've got a run button. Enter, shift, up, down, back. There are some of the certifications. Recycle it the right way, so on and so forth. Let's look at the top of this. Mentioned before, temperature and humidity. If you wanted one of these that has the ability to take AC, there's the AC input. And if you wanted one of these with a USB out or the ability to charge, you do this. Here is the, and this is, notice this is metal. This, is, this isn't plastic. Here's the detector in there. And see, if I turn this on, you should be able to see a little red dot. How about that? So, because it is a laser counter. Nice hand grip. This is soft here. This is hard plastic, but this is soft. Turn around on the back. So, this is just a, a, a standoff, you know, like a foot. And then there's another foot in there. Just so when you put this thing flat, it doesn't actually sit flat. Because this is a, a air intake. And let's see what else can go. Well, a 9-volt battery right here, various screws, don't take it apart, blah, blah, blah. Serial number, some kind of quality sticker saying, hey, look, it turned on, that kind of deal. All right, so uh, this thing actually can measure several different things, several different ways. So we're going to do, do a particulate count, or at least part of a particulate count test, where it's going to measure these three sizes of particles all at the same time. And then it's going to give you a count. All these zeros here are going to change to something else. Um, this particular model will store 1,000 readings in its memory, and you can recall them. All right, so you see it has a little bit of warm-up time, and then every 10 seconds it takes another reading, and it's storing these into its memory. And I'll show you in a minute. And see, this is piece per liter, so this particular sensor right here, uh, with its little vacuum that runs with the battery, does a uh, liter per minute. So this picked up 12,146 particles 
in uh, in a one liter area volume, uh, and this did um, fifty particles of two and a half micrometer in size, and then ten really large ones. Those are particles so large you can definitely see like dust specks, and you've seen them in some of my videos. Uh, there were none of those. So if I go and fiddle with this here, let's see if I can do this because I wear glasses, so. Sometimes I have to move this up closer just for me to see it. But here's some records. And see, I just started this and it says uh, record one of one. And you can go up to from 000, 999, so on and so forth. So you can have a lot of records in there. And let me go back over here. Here's where I can change the setting. And I can go to a weight of particles. In other words, a PM measurement. Now let's see if I can get this right. I think I go enter and then... Uh, what is it? Shift. Okay, it's so a piece per liter. Shift that to micrograms per cubic meter. All right. And then I think that locked that in. See, and I can change languages, uh, change from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I can reset, calibrate the device, blah, 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 blah. Uh, let's go back. If I get my good focus again, there we go. So here is a PM 2.5 and PM 10. And you see, this doesn't say pieces per liter anymore. This is now a weight of particles. If I can get a good focus. Eh. There. Let's see, is that good? Ooh, that's, that's good. All right. So I'm going to run this again. It's a different type of measurement. So, you know, the nice thing is, is if you forget when you actually did a measurement, You've got a time and date stamp up there. So let's see what this does. Okay, it's coming up to the first measurement. Okay, one and six. So you can do more uh, research exactly as what um, PM 2.5 and PM 10 actually is, but it's micrograms per meter cubed Nice. Okay. So now, and you have relative humidity in there, and that, that's kind of handy, especially when you go and measure rainbows and you see the, uh, see the water particulate actually, you know, raise the humidity. All right. So let's take a look at the manual for this thing. And I haven't seen this manual posted anywhere. So you want to use this as a reference, feel free. All right. Let's see if I can get a good focus. It is right there. And obviously you can pause this. I'm not going to sit there and read it to you. So do not block the sensor. Duh. Avoid strong air or hot air blowing into it. You don't, be, you don't want to go and like jam it into some kind of 200 degree exhaust. There's some specifications. So here we have different types of displays. And I'll, I'll zoom in on this as much as I can. So... This is when I do the pieces per liter. That's up at the top. And then here is the, the, the weight per meters cubed. You can see what it can actually do. There's the buttons. Here's how it functions. So if you decide that you're interested in one of these, here's the manual. I tried to find this manual before I bought this. I was not able to find it anywhere. So that's why I'm putting this on here now. And here are the new air quality standards. PM 2.5 standard. And vast majority of the time, I'm always between that 0 to 35. Of course, this is black and white, so unfortunately it doesn't show up with all the colors. But that's what it corresponds to. This bottom one here is red. This all the one uh, up here is uh, green, obviously, and everything in between is everything in between. You can get one with a rechargeable battery if that's what you want. AC adapter. Um, you can even charge it through USB. And here's all the specifications. So I really like this meter. It's priced wonderfully, reasonably, fantastic. It's accurate within reason. Typical precision right there. Operating conditions. Stored data up to 999 sets. Temperature range. 
Here's the last page. It sucks down batteries. It really does. So I get uh, the professional grade uh, Duracells and uh, I can take probably maybe somewhere between like 100 and 150 measurements before I have to replace the battery. And I pay a little over a dollar for the batteries. So that's, that's good enough for me. Like I said, there are multiple different versions of this you can get. But I tell you, one of the best things you want to do with your particle meter, okay, if you get one, is you want to keep it clean. So this is just a sample right here, but when you're not using it and you're going to be in a dirty environment, especially put it like, I don't know, in, in a bag, in a box, something like that, you know, keep it clean. Don't just leave it out, especially if you're in an environment that's, you know, three, four, five hundred thousand particles or something. This is a sensitive laser device and I want to keep it for a long time and have it be accurate. So I don't want to get a bunch of stuff junked up in there. And by the way, since this is metal, uh, it, you've seen that it's been somewhat, in some cases, a little awkward to actually use this, especially at an angle. Um, you could, uh, one of two ways, either get a tube that fits the outer diameter of this, because, you know, this has some little ribs on it there. And, you know, you could have a very large, uh, long or, or wide opening and go on the outside. Or I suppose you could have something um, very narrow that fits on the inner diameter of this, and you could uh, get some kind of a, you know, ice cream cone type of a, a you know, plunger on the other end uh, if you needed to, you know, measure something at some distance away. But this has worked out um, very well. So it's been very, very revealing. Um, I have uh, measured all kinds of particles, obviously, but I've also had a chance to measure outside air. And it's really nice to find out what your just plain outside air is let alone what, you know, a vacuum bag can actually do. So this is an HT9600. It's branded many different uh, names uh, in the United States and maybe other countries if you wanted something like this. But I got the um, just like generic no brand or unbranded version for $130 US a couple of months ago. And this has been uh, a really great tool, especially... Uh, for relative measurements. So at some point in time, uh, fairly soon, I have a couple more videos to post and I'm going to start doing some more um, repair videos. And you see the two machines that I need to do next. So thanks for watching. Happy vacuuming.